All right, welcome. In this video, I'm going to be working BC homework 6.1. So there's going to be some Riemann sums. There's going to be some evaluating definite integrals using geometry, you know, things like that. So the first set of problems, write a definite integral that represents the area of the shaded region. Evaluate it using geometry. Okay, so this is f of x equals 3. So it's going to be the integral of 3 as x runs from 0 to 5. So dx 0 to 5. Okay, this is a rectangle with width 5 and height 3. So that's going to be equal to 15. This is going to be an integral of 4 minus 2x, right? Because that's just the integral of f of x. As x runs from 0 to 2, so dx and 0 to 2. And that's going to be 1 half times the length of the base times the length of the height, and that's going to be good enough for us. Okay, this is going to be an integral of 4 minus the absolute value of x as x runs from negative 4 to 4. And that's also a triangle, so that it will be 1 half times the length of the base times the height of the triangle. And that's going to be suitable enough for us. All right. Write a definite integral that represents the area of the shaded region. Do not compute the area of the region. I don't think I need to worry about you doing that because we don't know how to do that yet. Okay. Now, this is... I did not realize this. This is a little tricky. This is probably beyond where we are right now. I'm, I didn't realize. I would, I would have put this on the notes if I'd realized. But what this is doing is that, okay, you can say this is 2 minus f of x, if you know what f of x is, but they gave us g of y. But it's the area underneath the graph of g of y as y runs from 0 to 2. So it's going to be the integral of y to the third as y goes from 0 to 2. And that's all they want, just write an integral. Hey, next time I will show you how to compute that, you know, by hand. Okay, so this is going to be as, as y runs from 0 to 2, y minus 2 squared. And, yeah, again, I will show you how to compute that next time. So, give a sketch of the region whose area is given by the definite integral. Use geometry to compute it. Okay. 1 to 6 of 3. Okay, so that's going to be 1... This will be 6. And use geometry. It's a rectangle. So that's going to be 5 times 3 is equal to 15. Okay. This is very similar to that one, just moved over by 1. Okay. Integral from 0 to 4 of x dx. Well, we know what the graph of y equals x looks like. That's going to be 4. Okay. And that's going to have height 4 also. So that's going to equal 1 half times the base times the height. Right. 2x plus 5, that's not so bad. Okay, so that's 2. So what this is going to be is a trapezoid. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to just split this up into a triangle and a rectangle myself. You can do whatever you want. But I'm going to say that, okay, 2x plus 5, so this is 5 here. And so this has a, an area of 10. And so at x equals 2, this will be 9. Okay, so this has a width of 2 and a height of 4, definitely not drawn to scale. So this area is going to be 1 half times 2 times 4 is going to be 4. And so this, area, this integral is equal to 14. Okay, this one, okay, this is a little tricky, but I do need you to know this, you know, as we move forward in the class. I need you to know that this is the equation of the upper half of a circle that's centered at the origin and has radius 3. Just one of those things that we have to know. If y equals this square root, then y squared equals 9 minus x squared, and that means x squared plus y squared equals 9. Okay. That's, uh, and also, the area underneath it from negative 3 to 0 is going to be 1 quarter of pi times radius squared. And that, that's great. All right, the graph of y equals f of x is shown over there. Region A has area 1.5, and the integral from 0 to 6 of f with respect to x is 3 and a half. Okay. Well, the integral from 0 to 2 is going to be, well, it's going to be negative because my area is underneath the x-axis. And since the area of region A is 1.5, well, that integral is going to be negative 1.5 because it's under the x-axis. Okay, the height of your rectangles when you're taking a Riemann sum would be negative. Okay, integral from 2 to 6. Okay, well, I know that negative 1.5 plus the integral from 2 to 6 equals 3.5. So, 
basically the area of B equals 3.5, so B equals 6, and B represents the area under the graph of F between 2 and 6, which is a positive number because we're above the x-axis. Okay, so that's equal to 6. Integral from 0 to 6 of F of x dx. I remember that from a previous year. I'm not sure why that's on there, but there is, I can do it. Right? Region A has area of 1.5, so this integral here is the negative of the integral from 0 to 2. And so it's the negative of negative 1.5. So this is equal to positive 1.5. Okay. The integral of negative 3 f of x from 0 to 6, well, that'll be negative 3 times the integral from 0 to 6 of f of x dx. And we know we already did this one. This is 3 and a half. So this is negative 3 times 3.5. And this one, we can split this over the addition, 0 to 6 of 2 dx plus integral from 0 to 6 of f of x dx. This one I'm going to need to use some geometry for. Right? This is y equals 2 as x runs from 0 to 6. Okay, plus, we said that was 3.5. It, this has so rectangle has area 12 plus 3.5 equals 15.5. Right. The velocity of a particle moving along the x axis is modeled by the differentiable function v, where the position x is measured in meters and t is measured in seconds. Selected values of v are given in the table below. Ex estimate the acceleration. Oh, we haven't done that for a while. We're going to do rise of a run on the table. Okay, so a of 36 is going to be approximately equal to, I'm going to use these two points, so 7 minus negative 4 divided by 40 minus 32. That's, that's a good estimate. It's the best estimate we got based on the data in the table. Okay, because 36 is in here between 32 and 40. Use a trapezoidal sum with three subintervals indicated by the data in the table to approximate 20 to 40. Okay, so just you need to make sure that you're not doing the whole thing. Right? So a trapezoidal sum is where we're going to average the bases and multiply by the height. Okay, or really, it's the width. But we're going to average the values of v, so negative 10 plus negative 8 divided by 2, multiply by the width, which was 5, plus average the values of v, so negative 8 minus 4 divided by 2, multiply by the height, 25 to 32 was 7. Plus, okay, I'm going to average negative 4 and 7 and multiply by the width, which was 8 from 32 to 40. And that's going to be a suitable Riemann sum, or it's, pardon me, a trapezoidal sum to approximate 20 to 40, the integral from 20 to 40 of V of T dt. I'm just going to go ahead and say you don't know that yet. I'm not sure. This is some work 6 1. Yeah, we we're just doing Riemann sums and stuff. This is not something you're, you're supposed to know yet. What I will tell you, just a preview, is it's change in position from t equals 20 to t equals 40. But you are not supposed to know that yet. That's what we'll find out next time and the time after and the time after that. So, pardon me. All right, let f be a function that's twice differentiable. Use a left Riemann sum to approximate the integral from 13. OK, sounds good. What we're going to do is we're going to use our left end points, right? So I'm going to use f of 2, f of 3, f of 5, and f of 8. I'm not going to use f of 13. So okay, using a left Riemann sum, I'm going to use the left edge to represent this interval, so 2 to 3, 1 times 1, plus this one to represent that interval, 4 times 5 minus 3 is 2, plus negative 2 times five mi or 8 minus 5, which is going to be 3, plus 3 times 13 minus 8 is going to be 5. Okay, that's a left Riemann sum because I am getting my height of my rectangle from the left edge of each subinterval. Right. The volume of a spherical hot air balloon. OK, 
Okay, use a right ream on sum to approximate. Yeah, again, I'm not sure how you're supposed to know these interpretation questions. Maybe I told them last year or the year before, whenever I wrote this homework, told them about the meaning of the, the integral, but I've not told you all about the meaning of the integral yet. That's what I'd plan to do next time, but it looks like some of the surprise is getting spoiled. So use a right ream on sum with the five intervals. Okay, yeah, we can do that. So we're going to use this one to... So 4 times 2 plus 2 times 5 minus 2 is 3 plus 1.2 times 7 minus 5 plus 0 0.6 times 11 minus 7 plus 0 0.5 times 12 minus 11. That's going to be a right Riemann sum for r prime of t. This is going to be... The amount of change in R of T between, and I'm not going to use correct units because I, I don't need to do that. I'm kind of running low on time. Uh, is my approximation from number 19 greater than or less than the true value of the integral? That's something we need to be able to do. So I used a right Riemann sum on a function that was strictly Okay, r is concave down. Okay, yeah, yeah. r concave down implies r prime decreasing. And since we had a decreasing function and a right Riemann sum, it's going to be an underestimate. Okay. My approximation is less than. The approximation is less than the integral from 0 to 12 of r prime of t dt. If the radius of the balloon at t equals 7 is 40, find the rate of change of the volume of the balloon with respect to time at t equals 7. I love this. This is good. Okay, Related rates. Let's do it. Okay, Let's say dv dt is 4 pi r squared dr dt. Right when you were about to forget about related rates. This is the perfect time to do it, I think. So we're finding dv dt. We have radius, ah, and we're going to have dr dt from the table, which is going to be our prime of 7 is 1.2. Okay, so 4 pi radius squared is 40 times 40 is 1,600 times our prime of 7 is 1.2. That's good stuff. All right, last page. Okay, I may not, time may not allow me to do all of these examples, and if that is the case, then, then I'm, I'm sorry, but I will come back and, and probably do them in a, I'll record it a separate time and just add it onto this video, uh, but, you know, it's a little, little consolation if you're watching this, you know, right before the quiz, and I don't get that done before then, but, you know, there's only 24 hours in a day, so. Please do what we Use a midpoint Riemann sum with three subintervals of equal length to go from 10 to 70 on V. Okay, so. Okay, so I increased by 60. So if I cut that into thirds, I'd be increasing by 20 each time. So my representatives are going to be 20, 40, and 60. And three subintervals to go from 10 to 70. Okay. So my subintervals are 10 to 30 is a width of 20. Height given by v of 20 is 22. Okay. Plus 30 to 50, also a width of 20. Height given by v of 40, so that's 35. Plus, again, 50 to 70 is 20. It's three subintervals of equal length, so that would make sense. And v of 60 is 44. Okay. This is the change in position, but again, you don't need to know that. From t equals 10 to t equals 70. Okay. Rocket B is launched upwards. Its initial height is initials. Which of the two rockets is traveling faster at time t equals 80 seconds? I love this question. It's a really good one. So. V uh, for A, 
The velocity for object A at 80 equals 49. Okay. For object B, velocity equals an antiderivative of 3 times t plus 1 to the negative 1 half power with respect to t. And, well, we will find out based on this integral. So it's, I'm going to increase the power by 1. So 1 half, divide by the new power. Checked. Check your antiderivative to make sure it works. Okay, yeah, that's going to work. And that's velocity is 2 when t equals 0. So I've got 6 plus c equals 2. That means when t equals 0. And that means c equals negative 4. So I've got velocity for b of t equaling 6 times t plus 1 to the 1 half power minus 4, which is 6 times 81 to the 1 half. We know the square root of 81. That's 6 times 9 is 54 minus 4 is 50. So object B or rocket B is going faster at that time. That was a really good problem. I enjoyed that. Okay. This problem this whole problem set has been really good about bringing back stuff from the previous from the previous lessons and I do appreciate that. But okay, trapezoidal sum and three subintervals going from 30 to 60. I find that when it's just a limited domain on your table, it's good to just block it off. So, all right. The absolute value of V is what's going on here. So at each of these places, it becomes a positive. So I'm just going to ignore the negative. So 14 plus 10 divided by 2. Average the bases, multiply by the width. That was 5. Plus average the heights or you know, average the V values. So 10 plus 0 divided by 2 times the width from 35 to 50 is going to be 15, plus average 0 and 10. So 0 plus 10 divided by 2 multiplied by 50 to 60 is a width of 10. And that's going to be that. The integral of the absolute value of v of t is the total distance traveled. But you will find that out at a later time. And that's all I got for you for this video.